drones. Uh, welcome to the webinar. How are you guys doing today? Perfect. Happy to be here. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, well, I'll get straight into it. Uh, today, we will present to you the agenda of the webinar and a little bit about Elister as, as well as Hellenic Petroleum and Hellenic Drones. And uh, from there on, we'll start with the webinar. Uh, and here we go. Okay, so we are Elister and we are one of uh, the a globally recognized tether drone company uh, and our key application uh, for industrial uh, monitoring safety is perimeter surveillance and security. Uh, and our topic today is improving industrial site safety using tether drones. Uh, and as we introduced earlier, our guests today are Evangelos and Estereos. Uh, Evangelos is joining us from Hellenic Drones. Uh, and Estereos uh, is the director at Hellenic Petroleum. And I am Karn uh, Kurana. I am the head of business development at Elister. Uh, quick summary about Elister. We were founded in 2014 in Lyon in France. Uh, globally, we've sold over 700 uh, tether drone systems in more than 65 countries. Uh, our head office and production center is in Lyon, France. Uh, we also have a sales office and a training team in Boston in the U.S. Uh, this is what our global footprint looks like. Uh, everywhere you see in blue is where we have some presence, either through a reseller or we have sold our product there. And uh, this is the range of our products. Uh, we have the Safety Light T, which are our two tether stations. And we also do the Orion 2, which is a tether drone. Some of the key applications for a list there uh, are industrial, uh, our perimeter surveillance and security, and also telecom applications. Some examples are event security, festivals, protests, uh, where we provide uh, surveillance solutions, tra traffic monitoring as well, and uh, siege hostage uh, command situations and border security operations. Uh, and our two guests today, uh, we have Hellenic Petroleum, which is one of the leaders in the Creek energy sector. Uh, and their range of activities are supplier refining and trading of petroleum products, fuel marketing, uh, petrochemicals production and trading, power generation and natural gas, uh, and they have presence uh, both in Greece and abroad. Uh, we also have Hellenic Drones, uh, which was founded in 2017 and is Southeast Europe's leader in drone-based services, both indoor and outdoor. Uh, they operate in more than five countries and have a skilled team of inspectors, pilots, engineers, uh, they're also the official reseller of many European-based drone manufacturers, including Elister. And uh, many of their R&Ds have been highly recognized, both at a national and European Union level. This is what we will go through today. Uh, we will quickly touch upon the general use of drones with a focus on tethered drones. Uh, we will also look at the operations conducted using tethered drones in the context of Hellenic Petroleum and Hellenic Drones. Uh, we will look at the course of those operations, how they implemented people safety, uh, equipment reliability, uh, their preparation for these operations, the setup, the duration, uh, the tools that were at their disposal. And our guests will then finally take us through the outcomes and conclusions and what they were able to achieve. And with that, I can end this presentation and we will begin our webinar. Yes, uh, so we are here today to get some feedback from our guests, uh, Estereos and Evangelos, about their experience on how Tether Drones contributed to industrial site safety in the context of their project. Uh, and so I can begin with my first question, which would be directed at, at Estereos. Uh, so Estereos, can you tell us uh, when did you start your drone project? 
and overall what was the initial motivation and objectives behind it well we started this more or less this journey uh, a few years ago when uh, drones were becoming a thing more or less uh, our first approach was very shy very experimental so we joined uh, efforts with uh, Hellenic drones uh, mostly for conducting uh, safety and uh, fire safety drills, evacuation drills, etc. Uh, using drones, at the time uh, we were using uh, only free drones, we would be able to monitor the uh, drill, the exercise at real time, transmit data in our operations center and um, see how we could approach a live incident without exposing our personnel to additional risk and at the same time give accurate feedback to our central offices uh, very recently during our um, general turnaround and for the people that are not from in the refiner business general turnaround is the general maintenance of the refinery happening once every four to five years depending on the site okay uh, this means about 3,000 people in the refinery. Everything stops and we have to do maintenance and project work. So we used uh, tethered drones mostly uh, to uh, monitor the safety performance of our employees and contractors. And at the same time, keep, keep a watchful eye in case of uh, incidents. Okay. Well, wow, okay, so you said 3,000 people, so that, 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 that's a lot of people that uh, uh, you're responsible for. Okay, and, and you, 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 uh, you know, one of the drones that you used for this was a tethered drone solution. Uh, so could you just quickly just tell us again what initiated your interest for a tethered solution? Uh, I, we had to um, monitor a, a very very wide space of uh, maintenance work of operations a lot of people and at the same time remember we were in the pandemic meaning that we had to right. minimize our exposure and at the same time monitor uh, the maintenance work so uh, at least one of the issues was not to have congestion people being all at the same time very close to one another at the time, there were no vaccines, no medical treatment other than, you know, hospitalization. So we had to uh, rely heavily on prevention. Okay. And um, this was our main motive, keeping a watchful eye uh, on 2,000, 3,000 people at the same time uh, in uh, maintenance work at grade or uh, working at height and uh, during the pandemic okay i understand okay so uh maybe then my next question would be to evangelos uh wherein uh, maybe you could tell us what are the limitations of free-flying drones that a that, that a tethered one overcame uh, especially in this context okay thank you i could think uh, a bunch of both but uh, i would like to short list it to the basics so first and foremost is uh, the flight time. It is uh, well known that uh, the free flying drones has a limitation of uh, average flying time uh, 20 minutes. Uh, in contrast, flying with a tether, we have been achieved uh, flying time up to three and a half uh, or four uh, hours. Uh, depends of the weather condition, we will explain probably later on. The second issue that is, uh, was very critical for this particular project uh, is that we could avoid flyaway uh, incidents. It's very, it's very critical for a refinery to avoid uh, these incidents. And um, the last one was the data transfer. Uh, operating in uh, a refinery uh, entails a lot, a lot of uh, interference, especially in uh, live streaming uh, frequencies. Thus, being just a few meters from uh, the drone flying over of us, the data transfer was perfect, uh, both wireless or uh, wired. Uh, on the other side, uh, because of uh, the complex 
and uh, a lot of uh, superstructures being there. We had also and blanket areas. Uh, then the, the, the free flying drones uh, was the tool that uh, we tried to cover these blackened areas or confined spaces as well. Uh, okay. So in summary, you're saying that we were able to use uh, a combination of free flying drones and tethered drones. Uh, which is which is actually a very interesting observation. Uh, could you maybe give us an example or elaborate more uh, on the operation that you carried out, uh, especially with the tether drone? May I? Uh, yes, please. Uh, the tether drone uh, flew, uh, well, we could say all the time, uh, but uh, as uh, Evangelos said, about uh, four to five hours straight and uh, at a time and this gave us the opportunity with minimal movement rotation and zoom in with the optical and thermal camera to monitor uh, uh, the movement of people the concentration of people and maintenance works both at grade meaning on the floor more or less and more importantly at heights because the, uh, there are superstructures in the refinery uh, that may go 60 70 100 meters up okay. where having a, a personnel a safety auditor would be uh, very difficult to impossible all the time so at any moment we could just rotate the drone focus in and see the tools that people were working with or the um, if they were uh, wearing their ppes their personal personal protective equipment if they were ca uh, carrying uh, um, uh, if they were um, using safe work practices and if we thought we saw uh, something uh, interesting we could guide uh, our feet in the ground people meaning the safety auditors to visit the area and uh, uh, have more information. Right. So, so having information and implementing any corrections and and overall monitoring of the mission. What is what was the size of the area of the operation? Oh, if you if you allow me, just just a comment. Yes, uh, go ahead, uh, Angelos. Karen, sorry, sorry, Asterios. Um, to add that um, uh, all these incidents were live streamed directly to the command center of uh, Hellenic Petroleum. Uh, thus, no of, uh, inspector in the field uh, was necessary to be as part of our team. Just uh, being on the headquarter of even in the office with a special uh, live streaming equipment that we have developed, uh, the, the, we were feeding um, the video uh, in the latency of uh, less than two seconds. So the inspector was able to act uh, instantly. Okay, well, thank you for that insight. Uh, so uh, maybe back to uh, Asterios, what, what was the size of the area of the operation that you were talking about and, and you know, uh, uh, the, the duration and maybe you can tell us a little bit about the, the conditions also on during that time of, of, of operation well uh i i really don't know where to start it was a very challenging experience uh we let, let's imagine four or uh, five uh, city square blocks that we had to directly monitor and uh, of course the refinery uh, including the off sites it's much bigger but the main uh, front of uh, the main, main area of uh, maintenance works was this big. Uh, talking about two uh, to 3,000 people each day in this area, uh, work being carried out at many levels, one above the other, not only on ground level. Um, uh, we were on uh, late autumn, so... Um, it's Greece, so it's sunny and uh, heat and uh, uh, hot and humid. Um, not too much uh, uh, wind velocity, but uh, Evangelos is better to speak about that issue. 
And of course, it was also the era of the pandemic. So I've already told you about that. Okay. All right. So it, in such a large scale operation, uh, how do you, uh, you know, there's many risks, uh, you know, in, in confronting the operator and, and actually the people that work on the site. So how do you evaluate and, and mitigate the risks of operating uh, a, a UAS uh, near you know, crowded or sensitive area like that. With a tethered drone, this problem is minimal, minimal if not zero. Uh, we sell, uh, working with Hellenic drones, we chose a specific location that was uh, one of our buildings on the, the rooftop of one of our buildings. So uh, the tethered drone just flew directly above a, a rooftop. There were no personnel there, uh, uh, with the exception of uh, the personnel, uh, the pilots of Hellenic drones, and maybe uh, some of our inspectors. But with um, uh, with the optical and thermal camera that uh, Elister's drone had, we could be able to. We were able to see uh, almost up to three kilometers away. Okay. So we didn't have to actually physically place the drone over the works we could just see if you if our um, listeners uh, viewers have seen the lord of the rings they might remember sauron's eye looking uh, right so uh, since um, safety is the um, sauron of the refinery usually uh, our eye was uh, elister's drone so to speak okay well, thank you for that. Uh, I, I don't think that's a compliment, but... <laughs> uh, we'll take it. Uh, Evangelos, maybe then a in, in, uh, question for you in that case. Uh, so how do you control uh, a, a system failure in this kind of situation? Uh, you know, especially uh, especially to the, to the hardware and, and then to the people around. Okay, okay. First of all, uh, uh, being uh, oper operating from uh, the roof of uh, the building in the center of refinery, we have also established uh, a safety zone of um, a diameter equal to the length of uh, the tethered. Uh, so uh, no people uh, interference in the area. In this regard, we have avoid any any let's say. Uh, potential of uh, uh, involving people in this uh, uh, flying operation. In terms of uh, equipment, flying with uh, a tether and having uh, the safety battery, the safe battery on board uh, uh, the drone, both with um, the module that powering uh, the drone, that entails, um, let's say, a feature of uh, uh, of safety because of even if we lose the power uh, the battery itself can power the drone uh, until we land it in the area that has been designated so uh, basically uh, there were there were no danger in in terms of uh, operation in the area of uh, 50 meters around uh, the building both for people and equipment okay and uh, in terms of equipment, then in how long did it take you to install the equipment and, and, and actually deploy the drone uh, for the operation? I'd like to start from the preparation because the uh, decision was taken um, 15 days uh, before the uh, turnaround to start. Uh, so we have made a site survey first in order to, uh, to, to choose the um, the most suitable uh, place to, to fly, and in terms in terms of uh, deploying the drone from the bottom to, to the top, it uh, every time it took us uh, less than uh, uh, thirty seconds. Okay, uh, all right. So so obviously you you you've uh, uh, practiced this scenario a few times uh, and and keeping it in in context. Uh, but what about, you know, the first time you actually deployed it? Did, did it take you longer? Does it always take 30 seconds? 
Um, just the just before this, I would like to 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 stress that before this project, we have tried and we have operated with the Hellenic Petroleum uh, at least, if I'm not mistaken, uh, three three uh, or two. Three. Times, I don't remember exactly. Three. Times, three. Okay. Three times. Uh, okay. One was um, two years ago um, in the context of um, a firefighting exercise that was very successful then. It was the first uh, that held in the area, not only in Greece, but in Southeast Europe, if I'm not mistaken. It's also a case study on your uh, website for this. That's right. And um, the second that I remember, it is very interesting was uh, for uh, an oil spill uh, in the in the area in the coast of uh, refinery again i, I uh, have with... to interrupt you vangelis it was yeah. more than an oil spill it was an isps security drill in our uh, uh, harbor installations combined with an evacuation and fire drill and combined with an oil spill so it was a very complex scenario that we could monitor using, at the time, uh, uh, free and tethered drones. So, uh, to, to continue to your question, uh, of course, we were um, uh, familiar with the area, uh, but even if we weren't familiar with the area, um, it, 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 was, um, it should take us just uh, for the first uh, time to fly with a tether in, in the complex, it would take us less less than half an hour to deploy the drone, uh, to, to adjust the equipment, uh, to, to use uh, the, the, safety, the safety equipment, the tents that we need in the area. It, it was uh, very okay. easy for us. So once you, once you actually arrive, uh, you know, at, at the location, the the end to end and setup time is pretty fast. Is 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 what you're trying to say? Were there any specific authorizations, flight authorizations pertaining uh, to a tethered drone uh, that that you had to obtain? And and are these easy to obtain? I know this is question is very region specific, uh, but maybe we can you know uh, get your insight in, in, into the fact as well. Yeah. Then then yes, it was region specific, but uh, not anymore. In, uh, in the area of uh, uh, EU, but then yes, it was, and uh, flying with uh, the tether system, uh, the authorization has been granted uh, just in a day. Uh, okay, I remember how easy we gained this uh, authorization in contrast with other um, similar operation with no okay. tether drone. So overall, uh, uh, also th this this has always been an advantage uh, for tethered drones. Yeah. Is, is getting authorizations, uh, wherein the the disadvantage of the system is uh, that it cannot fly very far. But that in itself is the advantage and, and the USP of the product. Uh, not not sorry, not just for uh, the authorities, but uh, for the asset owner uh, uh, itself, because the asset owner, Hellenic Petroleum's, uh, at this moment. Um, feels more confident and more secure flying with a tether in a complex and uh, okay. it's a difficult area. I understand. It also helped with um, another uh, challenge that uh, some uh, operators may find in EU uh, mainly with uh, GDPR, with protection of personal data. Right. So a tether drone is more or less another camera. Uh, it's not following you around and uh, it's not everywhere you go. So uh, it was easier to uh, prove in uh, the data protection impact, impact assessment that this is a limited case, limited use, reasonable use of personal data. So we didn't have uh, such an issue using a tether drone. Right, and, and it's also not so easy to, to hack into the tether cable to retrieve that data. So it's a lot more secure. Uh, all right, well, well that, that, that was very insightful. Did you, uh, Evangelos, this one is for you. Did, did you uh, have any tools at your disposable, disposal in order to monitor the flight? Yes, of course. How did you go about yeah, monitoring yeah, your flight? 
apart apart from the data and the feedback that we received from uh, the drone itself um it was very helpful and critical having um a special uh application from uh, Alistair, the team monitor that we have constantly we're constantly aware of the temperature of um uh, the power supply of everything thus if we if we would have seen that uh, something uh was getting wrong with uh, the power supply then um we can uh, land the drone and uh, make our uh, our uh, checks of in order to find out what was happening. Yes, the team monitor, uh, the application of uh, Alistair was very helpful. helpful. Okay, and and uh, uh, you you made a I, I, I believe it was Lialios, uh, but you made a reference to the weather uh, earlier when you were telling us about the high temperature conditions and and and. And for Evangelos, uh, windy conditions. So, can can you give us an example of, of how you coped with that situation? Okay, okay. Um, uh, to be honest, we we're very lucky in terms of uh, of the wind. We haven't encountered a lot of um, strong winds then. Just uh, three days, if I'm not mistaken, um, and um, was we were very lucky that it was uh, in the course of a weekend when um, the work has been reduced but uh, in contrast the temperature uh, was uh, very high we have reached uh, then 40 degrees uh, in this regard uh, we have uh, make our uh, let's say preparation in advance so we had at hand four modules at, um, at the field in order to avoid over, avoid overheating of the module so every flight that uh, we were uh, we are doing then uh, we're, we were using a different module in order to avoid um, the same module flying all the time or all over the day because we're flying 24 7 then even so you were in, flying 24 7 back then 24 7 okay. with intervals with intervals between the flights in order let's say to 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 change uh, the module uh, a break for the pilot that was uh, just uh, okay. less than 20 minutes so if you if you exclude the 20 minutes in in, in the course of uh, 24 hours then you can find how many hours we were, were flying constantly for 65 days okay and you uh, one of the ways that you mitigated the risk was to have multiple systems uh, right. And, and, and pilots that were rotating and, and conducting these missions as part of their brief. Okay. Both, All right. Both, well, so, yeah, please. Both, both uh, tether stations and modules. We were flying with uh, two tether stations and four uh, modules. Okay. Um, well, so it, it, it seems then that uh, tethered drones is, has brought a significant impact and, and, and a change in the way you conduct your mission. Uh, so from, uh, what do you think? What is your conclusion on that? Uh, we, we um, after the uh, successful landing of our turnaround, every time we have a, uh, a debriefing, uh, we, we, with uh, about all issues, technical, economical, safety, of course. And one of uh, the things we discussed was that uh, groundbreaking use of uh, tether drones for uh, safety and security monitoring of the, um, of the works. And we've already made up our mind that we are going to have uh, a tether drone in all our turnarounds. Uh, right now, we are planning for our next turnaround in uh, our LFC's refinery in uh, Attica, in Greece. And uh, we are going to uh, employ a tether drone monitoring system there as well. Okay, well, that, that, that's great. And uh, we're very happy to hear that. Uh, just to summarize what, what you just said, uh, so uh, you feel there's some value that was brought to the mission uh, in terms of, uh, I could say, higher efficiency, uh, maybe uh, better uh, repartition of people, and also uh, lower spending uh, in terms of uh, funds and, and uh, 
you know, overall value added to the mission? Uh, I wouldn't even to talk about money, meaning that uh, uh, using a, a drone, tethered or uh, free flying, but mostly tethered, is a multiplying factor for safety. Uh, you can't really do what you do with a drone using people. That would mean that you have a person on every catwalk, a person on every tower, on every reactor, on every fin fan cooler. And that's impossible. So uh, we using more or less the same amount of safety, the same number of safety inspectors, you multiply your efficiency by at the same time using the drone to have a watchful eye over the whole site. So um, uh, it's priceless, really. Okay. Uh, we actually have a uh, question that uh, you've already answered, but I'll just repeat it. Uh, for the sake of our listeners. And that question is, how many drones uh, did Mr. Asterio start with? And uh, what was the cost approximately? So I think uh, for the purpose of this webinar, we may leave the cost part out of it and we will email you uh, messages separately. But I believe, and, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but you started out with two uh, tethered drones and, and four air modules. Is that right? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Okay. Uh, all right. And we flew this uh, for 24 hours a day over a period of 60 plus days. Correct. Okay. In multiple shifts uh, using multiple pilots. Uh, all right. Uh, let's see. What would you say is your uh, Hall of Fame, uh, Evangelos, in terms of uh, the longest flying time with the tethered drones? And what okay. were the general conditions and, and, and hovering altitude and, and uh, stuff like that? Uh, first of all, I would like to remind that uh, it has been a record. We were flying uh, for a thousand of hours this uh, 65 days. Okay. Uh, if I'm wow. not mistaken, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's the worst first. Uh, I don't know if anybody else has reached uh, so many hours flying with uh, the other drones, but uh, I would be very grateful if uh, somebody else can uh, overcome us. That will be a challenge for our next mission. Um, okay. Um, in terms of weather, as, as I mentioned, uh, we were lucky. No extremely windy condition, but uh, of course, uh, adverse sometime temperature condition and we have overcome all these uh, problems with uh, a good preparation of uh, the operation and the mission statement that we have agreed with uh, the Hellenic Petroleum and uh, to be honest having um, uh, somehow uh, the permission of uh, Hellenic Petroleum to have a break of um, 20 minutes was very leveraged in order to uh, for both the pilots and uh, the system as well uh, to perform these 24-7 uh, operations. Okay. Well, uh, thanks, Evangelos. And uh, we're almost approaching uh, the end of our webinar. So uh, I'm going to end it with the last couple of questions. Uh, in addition uh, to a refinery, uh, what kind of other industrial sites can one use a tethered drone for, Evangelos, in your experience? And, and uh, you know, where else has Hellenic Drones uh, implemented this? Oh, okay. Uh, generally speaking, uh, every, every critical, every critical uh, complex uh, is a potential of using the tethered drone. That uh, we have tried in harbors here in Greece. We have tried in uh, social events and sport events uh, here in Greece uh, as well. Uh, once abroad uh, in Bulgaria rec recently. A logistic site uh, are of great importance uh, to use tethered drones uh, in order to monitor or the, or, or the area. And recently we have received requests from uh, the Ministry of Defense and uh, we have already uh been in agreement uh to uh to sell 
uh, a two system that uh, will be applied, uh, will be de deployed in a military base, not as a, not as a pilot uh, project, but uh, but as a sequence of uh, tether to be uh, the new arsenal of drones for uh, Greek Ministry of Defense. Okay. All right. Well, uh, I think we can uh, uh, successfully say that uh, there's been uh, much value that has been added to your project. Uh, so, Asterios, do you think you will uh, continue to use tether drones in the future? Uh, uh, as uh, as I've already told you, we've uh, decided to use tether drones in our next turnaround and in all our turnarounds. We are uh, also using drones in, uh, for inspection, especially flare inspection, which is more or less the higher structure, highest structure that we have in refineries. And how high are, would that be? Sorry to interrupt you, but... 100, uh, 120 meters, depending okay. on the flare. And at the same time, using, uh, we are experimenting with using special drones for confined space inspection in order not to expose people in the risk entailed with such operations. And uh, something that we left uh, out of this discussion so far, handling emergencies. We will continue to use uh, free drones and tether drones for our drills. And uh, we had, uh, during the previous turnaround, we had the opportunity of using uh, uh, free drones and tether drones uh, during a security incident uh, we had. And uh, we used it not only to our advantage, but also to uh, help Greek police to monitor the, the event that was near our, um, our fence. Okay. All right, well, thank you very much, Lialios. That has been very insightful. Uh, in fact, uh, to summarize, I can say that uh, uh, we can use successfully a combination of free flying and tethered drones uh, for industrial site safety, uh, perimeter surveillance, as well as security applications uh, in areas such as refineries, uh, uh, airports where the legislation works in favor of tethered drones, uh, as well as in, in, in police applications for event monitoring um, and um, also for some communication applications. Uh, and Evangelos, thank you very much uh, as well for your time. Uh, and, and, and uh, the combination of, of uh, Hellenic drones and Hellenic petroleum uh, the project that we worked together for, for 24 hours a day uh, over two months. Uh, this was a great success and we congratulate the both of you. Uh, and uh, thank you for your attendance to this webinar as well. Uh, on that note, I would like to, to conclude the webinar. Uh, if if uh, for our uh, listeners, if you have any questions, the chat will be active for an additional five minutes. Uh, if you'd like more information about the product, feel free to email me. Uh, if you'd like to be uh, put in touch with any of our moderators, if you have more questions, also, please feel free to reach out to me and I, I will connect you with them. Uh, and uh, that will be all for today. Uh, thank you, gentlemen, for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, goodbye, and, and, and I, I wish you guys a great day ahead to the listeners as well as to our guests. Take care. Bye. Bye.